stark contrast to yesterday. We have a pretty miserable morning. They're all dinner. Dinner! <laughs> it's become a bit of a bomb site in here. Past couple of days, just head down in the tank doing the welding. It's not going to be too bad though to tidy up, five minutes and then we'll get on with today's project which is make a circle cutting template or jig, that's the right word. So I imagine it's going to consist of some type of bar, one end to hold the plasma torch, the other end to be affixed to the centre of a circle and then whoosh, round we go just like a great big compass hopefully cutting out a perfect cycle of stainless steel. Just like that, tidy shop, easily done. Part one of today's task is to figure out or to test the principle of forming the cone with the sheet metal. Now to many of you this may look like I have an unhealthy obsession with kettle chips and I do, but Principally, I've got this sheet of cardboard out here because cardboard's cheap and stainless steel is freaking expensive. So what we're going to do is sketch out our cone pattern up on said sheet of cardboard and we'll see if we can form it into a cone. And if you're watching Froggy, you can remember when we tried to do this at IVB. <laughs> Couldn't figure it out for the life of us. But I've got a few more smarts in the bank since then, and uh, I think we'll be able to crack it. Okie doke! So I've measured out a few dimensions on here. The first thing that we want is this radius 2, which is for our cone and everything else that you can see on here if you want to pause and read it. The radius 2 is 497. Now this is much bigger than the radius of the top of the cone, which is 400. But you've got to remember that we're losing the bottom section of the cone because we're gonna start with a concentric reducer, 100 mil, because you can't roll a proper cone. This has to be a cone with no base on, of course, to let the beer and stuff out. So 497 is the number for this part of the uh, task. So I found the center point of the card. I've put a mark on at 497 point whatever mil, like I can do a point with a sharpie. Point, point of a millimetre, no chance. And then I've made a slip knot on this piece of totally clinically accurate uh, rope that's going to bend and flex and change position, but it's good enough to test the idea. And then we're going to pop the pen in there and we're going to bugger off around in a cycle. Not too shabby. Now we have to measure out our arc angle. So we need to draw from the radius, from the center out to the edge, put the radius line on there. And then we have to figure out 289 degrees. And that's where we put the other line. And that'll give us like the cranes bill that we have to chop out of the circle to roll this cone. Oh, and before I do that, I also have to put radius one in which will be a smaller circle in the middle, 60 mil circle. Right, get ready for your mind to be blown. So now we needed to input the arc angle of 289 degrees. Well, let's round that up to 290. I don't have a protractor, an angle finder or anything here. So I know for a fact that a straight line intersecting the center point of a circle is 180 degrees. So we can tick tock all the way around to there. We've got 180. And then another straight line intersecting the centre of that one will give us the 90 degrees. So 180 plus 90 brings us up to 270. And now we need to start to shrink things down again. So 45 degrees off of that line puts us at 315 degrees. So if we add it on top. So I want to then find the middle of that 45 degrees, which is 22 and a half degrees which puts us there. I just did that by measuring it with a tape. And then I'm guessing we just take two degrees off. And of course, 
if you add 20 to 270, because I've taken the two off, look. So if you take a 20 to 270, you get 290. So this is where we want to be for the bird's mouth from that line to that line. So I'll mark it up and we'll get a cut out. So if I hold you folks up there, can you see this section of the cone that I'm going to be cutting out? So there we have it. That wasn't as easy as it looks, even though it's just made out of cardboard so I can see that the stainless steel is going to cause us a bit of trouble. Well, she will fit. <laughs> she fits all right. But I'm just concerned that when I do finally cut it out, you see the fitment as it comes around the edge around here and then it overlaps there and then, well that could obviously just be you know, errors in cutting the whole thing out. So principally, I think that if I ensure that the cone is larger than the base, I fit it on the outside, I can then run around and grind off any excess after I've welded the thing together. I think that's the most convenient and safest way of uh, of cutting these out. It may sound slightly ludicrous to you folks, but I've just spent most of the day, it's now three o'clock, fabricating this. Now this is an implement that I'm going to use to cut out the circles and the cone patterns. It's basically a plasma torch circle cutter. So there are several components to this little tool, I guess you might call it. One of them is the fact that it can hold the plasma cutter head securely. If I can just undo that nut, then this will open up, releasing the torch. I'll just drop that on the floor for a minute. Right, so we have a torch holder there. This thumb screw on the side will undo, allowing you to adjust the diameter of the circle. All you need to do is drill a small hole in the centre of the disc you want to cut, which is where this bolt will go through. To get the first circle on there, I've just taped a pen onto the side of this, but in principle, it's exactly the same technique as what we're going to use for the plasma torch. So, the distance to the edge is exactly the distance that I require for my circle or the diameter radius that I require my circle to be. So if I take this and I set it to its furthest point and then now <laughs> we should just be able to Drive the circle all the way around the piece of steel. Hey presto! Right, I'm going to turn the volume down on this. Wish me luck.
created Pac-Man. I'm not sure, but I think we had a battery die on us there. So she's cut out really nicely, don't you think? There's the segment on the floor. Didn't really skip a beat. There's the pizza cutter wheel out the center. The jig works okay. Right, so I'm just gonna take this over to the grinding bench and clean up the slag on the edge, the dross. And then maybe I'll have time to just give it a quick run through the roller, see if we can't get it to cone up. Well, I can honestly say, cleaning that cone template up was the worst job I've done yet. Literally, the dross on the underside of these was so bad, it took me nearly half an hour to go around that with a grinder. Right, and that's a wrap, folks. I'm gonna have to go and take uh, the kids off Gemma because she's coming down here it's Tuesday. She works Tuesdays. But look at that, we've got conage. It's gonna need some bashing about a little bit. And that's really the best fit I could get for the, uh, for the seam. But I think I can cope with it. I just need to flatten it out in spots and curve it up in other places. But once she's been beaten around a little bit and forced forced to accept my will, then I'm pretty confident that that will go on the bottom of those fermenters. So we are cracking on. Home, I'm tired. I'm slumming it. That's all I've got. I'll see you tomorrow. More cone making. God, I'm so tired. I've got to edit the vlog now. See you later.